show you how easy it is to create a native app using Application Craft. And we're going to use the Crunchbase API. Uh, this allows us to browse around the Crunchbase database. So let's open up the app and see how it works before I show you how it was done. So here we are. Let's uh, press the Start button here. And the first screen is pretty basic. I can enter the name of a company I want to search for. And you can see now it's called the API. Pull back some data, and I can now drill down. So let's click on Facebook here. And now it's pulled some information again out of the API. Uh, and I can carry on surfing around. Uh, for instance, I might want to look at the investors in Facebook. Click on this. Here are the investors. Let's take a look at uh, Greylock Partners. And you can see we're now surfing across uh, backwards and forwards. Um, let's go back. Let's look at Meritech. They've got 43 investments. Maybe I'll go and look at some of their investments. Um, okay, what about uh, PopCap Games? Let's take a look at them. And so on. So I'm moving freely around the Crunchbase database. So now let's go and find out how easy it is to do that. And everything you see here has been done in just a couple of hours. So let's go and close this down. You need to do is to create your new app, and this is all done in the uh, what we call the console. Here we can see all the apps that are listed, and these can be shared so you can collaborate uh, between multiple developers on apps and projects. Here's our Crunchbase app. Let's uh, double click and we can open it up in the IDE. So here's our IDE with lots of widgets on the left. I'm not going to tell you in detail how this was built, just want to give you a quick feel. But basically, what we have in the air middle area here is our sort of UI layout. Uh, apps can have any number of pages and um, you can see there's the search page and there's what we call a repeater container which lets us bring in records of data in any way you like including graphics uh, very very flexible uh, that's the page we use for displaying companies and so on so we have this layout area here and on the right hand side we've got all the properties you need to really tightly control uh, individual widgets that we have on the page uh, everything is event driven um, and this takes us into how we write code. So if I want to click on the um, uh, events tab, uh, I can then select individual widgets and any events that are set. Uh, you'll see here, uh, for instance, this uh, list box here, which is a mobile widget. This has got an on-click event. And if I click here, that takes us in to the, uh, the code editor. Well, we can see on the left-hand side here we've got a code explorer. That's let me uh, obviously navigate around the code very quickly. Um, and the code editor has got lots of nice little features, um, as well as important features like um, syntax checking. So here we've got a syntax error report. The next step is to uh, is to do some debugging for a so if I wanted to debug this I can uh, insert debugging statements so if I go to our home page for instance when I click I want to bring up the debugger when I click on this button um, let's put in a JavaScript event for this and just say debugger And now if I preview this, I'll first of all just bring up our, the Google Developer Debugger, click on Preview. This now runs it without leaving the IDE. Click on Touch to start. And here you can see up comes the debugger. So from here I can do all the things that you could, I think that you could possibly want. Um, another way of debugging I'll show you now. There's a very cool app from uh, Ripple, and that's what you're seeing on screen here. And what this lets me do is to run my uh, app inside a container, which lets me pass in device values. For instance, if I have something which needs geolocation, I can set geolocation values, simulate errors, uh, simulate uh, network settings, and so on. Um, and this is a very way, a very nice way of, uh, of doing debugging if you want to sort of force certain values. The third way of debugging is to, let me just close this down, is to actually, uh, from 
the Application Craft IDE, you can deploy your app natively, as I'll show you in just a moment. And you only need to do that once. And then afterwards, if I want to make modifications to my app, whether it's through the UI, the code, or whatever, all I have to do then is to make my mods, press the Save button, and then just run the, uh, run the app again on my uh, smartphone or my iPad. And that will instantly reflect any changes. Uh, that means you don't have to go through the painful process of uh, compiling it and getting it back onto your device, copying it or downloading it or whatever. So that's, um, that's the third way of doing it. Now let's go and take a look at how we actually turn this effectively web app into a native app using the very wonderful phone gap. So we're going to close down uh, our app here. And any of these apps here um, that I want to turn into um, a native app, I can. If I come across to the More button, click on Mobile, by default you can see that uh, we have just one, uh, in this case a QR code, which isn't uh, it's just a, a URL encapsulated in here. And um, but we've got empty spaces for several other platforms. And um, all I need to do is to press the Build button. And let me click that now. And what will happen is that that will go away asynchronously, it's actually calling um, PhoneGap uh, as a web service, and it will build those native apps for me. I can come back later on and see how it's getting on, and you might see that it hasn't quite done anything yet. I'm going to go back to our Crunchbase app, though, where I already set that running. And here you can see we've got um, things already built here. I've got an error on the BlackBerry, um, that's because of a file naming convention error that we're fixing. Um, and you can see that I can download, for instance, this Android app now if I wanted to. And that's an APK file that I can deploy in any way that I like. Uh, Apple is slightly more complex, but just as simple. As long as you get your keys up onto the, um, you've got your keys from Apple, uh, then uh, it's a straightforward process. It just gets built with the build button. Uh, and that's how easy it is. In the next uh, blog post I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how quickly and easily you can build an app that accesses all of your device hardware on pretty well any smartphone. So that's camera, video, audio, accelerometer, GPS, and so on.